Yo, opponent, it's time for your punishment. Get out your dice with shrine of punishment. Tapu Goku flying, flipping you in an instant with Tapu Lele Wee and your existence. Have you seen my epic looking weave out here? Take a seat and stay for a while. Rule of evil, let it create an immediate smile. Because more than half of the format will be saying goodbye. Or how about we take it chill and stall? Hoopa showing up and your deck will fall. Using a bunch of hammers, discarding it all. Yes, you will. Feel the pain with this wall And now close your eyes and picture Aurora Choreo We are hungry like we desire an Oreo Yeah, hungry for damage, look at this scenario Dirty young, every GX, what a disaster, yo Ha! Episode 184, Shrine of Punishment Yeah, yeah! What's up with you? It's Zadlux TCG here and thanks again for watching our TCG episode on my channel. This is episode 184 and as you know on my channel we always talk about the latest cards and new decks in town so be sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out and hitting the little notification bell will make sure you are the first to know when a new video hits the channel. So okay in this video we're not going to talk about new jacks from Celestial Storm we already uh, covered the most relevant ones. Today we're going to talk about a stadium card from Celestial Storm and that is going to be the Shrine of Punishment. For those of you that don't know what Shrine of Punishment does. It's a stadium card and it states between turns put one damage counter on each Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX both yours and your opponents between turns. So that is just crazy. That, just think about that. Let's say the opponent is playing a Naganadel stack attack deck. How many stack attackers will they have in play? Well, usually around two or three and uh, they will rely of course uh, on uh, filling their bench with Ultra Beast and they most of the times that will be all GX Pokemon and they will receive one damage counter. That goes through of course the ability of stack attack at the Ultra Wall because this is a damage counter and not relevant damage. So that is awesome. So in this uh, particular video, I'm just gonna talk about this. We are just gonna talk about deck ideas where it. So, uh, if you want to make a deck with this, this is uh, going to be a helpful video, deck ideas with Shrine of Punishment. The only thing you have to uh, take into consideration, you need four of them to just abuse it. So what we are going to do here, we are going to not play any GXs at all and we're going to play a bunch of spreading cards in order to just increase those numbers on the opponent's side of the field. And uh, every time they will receive a damage counter, I know you can get rid of this thanks to a card like Field Blower or if they play their own stadium card, but we are going to play four copies. I don't think they'll be able to be uh, playing four uh, Field Blowers. So that is awesome. So, first card I want to talk about is, of course, Tapu Koko. You already know Tapu Koko, the promo card. It is available in a wide number of uh, versions. Uh, right now, there's also a shiny version available, shiny Tapu Koko, doing the same thing, flying flip. It deals 20 damage to every one of the opponent's benched Pokemon, or actually to every uh, each Pokemon in play. So it's not only the benched Pokemon, as you can see here, it states uh, this deck does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. So it deals 20 damage to everything that they have. So bam, that's a lot of damage. So let's say we're facing uh, to just make it a little bit simpler, where where are the cards I'm gonna lay here? It, let's say we're facing Zoroark. What does Zoroark like to do? Exactly, they want to fill up their bench in order to hit for a righteous beating for a bunch of damage. Well, Shrine of Punishment will make sure they get one damage counter. Flying Flip will make sure they will get 20 damage on everything. So in total, that will be 30 damage on every GX. So very, very interesting indeed uh, to spread around some damage. We're also gonna rely, just to, to make it a little bit simpler for you guys, we are gonna, of course, rely on the Tapu Lele. We have uh, two versions of Tapu Lele here. We have, uh, of course, the Fairy one and the Psychic one. We are finally getting this one. Uh, it was in a Celestial Storm Blister Pack. And as you see, it has the Magical Swap attack. With that, you can move any number of damage counter on the opponent's side of the field anywhere we like. That means, uh, let's say we deal 20 damage on everything, try to punishment is in play well. Uh, in a couple of turns they will receive a bunch of damage and uh, with this we can replace all the damage to get the KOs later. So uh, in order to just get this attack going, of course we will rely on counter energy because we most of the times will fall behind. We have weak HP Pokemon, 110 HP, uh, sometimes the opponent will uh, be uh, very fast and just knock a bunch of stuff out. That is not a problem for us, we're gonna rely on counter energy to just have that energy cost for Tapu Lele. It also works for the flying flip, that means you have sort of extra double Carlos energies because we will be uh, falling behind in prize cards and of course double Carlos energies will be the way to go in this deck so to just fill up the Tapu Koko's attack. Another card I want to talk about here if we're just talking about spreading damage 
it is Orocorio. Now you might say, wow, Orocorio, most of them suck. Well, not this time around. The one from Celestial Storm here with the Zappy Pom Poms has a great attack. This attack deals 30 damage to each Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX. You can see the synergy right now, Shrine of Punishment between turns and one damage counter. If you're facing uh, a bunch of Pokemon, just use Flying Flip. Uh, if you have access, of course, to Counter Energy, you give a Counter Energy or to Orocorio and boom, off you go. I know, I know pretty well that uh, we're running all a bunch of special energies, but we are just planning to just see a knockout every single turn. They will definitely knock it out, it has 90 HP. So if, even if they use Enhanced Hammer or using the Slice of Ability of Cartana, we won't ever see our energies back. We are gonna use the attack in order to spread damage and hopefully we will uh, get the trick going here. Another great spreading Pokemon is Weavile. I do suggest running maybe a tree tree line of Weavile or maybe something else if you're uh, trying out Shrine of Punishment because think about the format right now. The format is filled with a bunch of abilities and uh, the one that stands out most is Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele, the wonder tag ability, every, uh, almost every deck has it. Now we have Zoroark, the trade ability, seen a bazillion amount of times. Stormy Winds of Rayquaza Jax, also kind of new from Celestial Storm, swinging in. Stakataka, it has an ability. Lycanroc, it has an ability. Gardevoir, it has an ability. I could keep going all day long here because uh, there's a bunch of things in the format right now with abilities. Think about Molomar, think about maybe even the Smoodo. Uh, I don't think I can fit it here all in uh, one video. So uh, smooth over, Dawn is the close. As you see, almost the entire format runs uh, abilities. That means if we can just get this attack off, you can use that for a simple card as energy. So you can even rely on counter energy, even if you're not behind in prize cards. That means just get out your Weavile early game, Shrine of Punishment on the field, and just start swinging it. Rule of Evil, bam! If you're facing Zor uh, Rayquaza, you'll have a very fantastic time. If you're facing Stack Attack or Zorark, it's gonna be a fantastic time. Rule of Evil uh, compar compared, of course, with Shrine of Punishment and a couple of turns where you can use that, you will definitely be getting the and seeing the KOs here. I know that all these kind of Pokemon are kind of weak to like Baby Boswell because, of course, Baby Boswell is not a GX and uh, we are weak to fighting, but we at least can uh, give it a swing here with the flying flip and the uh, the tapu lele here. Another thing you should know is that you can always run tech cards. Uh, this tapu lele, if you have a counter energy, can attack, and that deals 20 damage for every energy that the opponent has attached. So that could also swing out for a bunch of damage. Also, that another Pokemon that deals uh, some uh, significant amount of damage is of course Latios from Shining Legends. Breakthrough dealing 30 damage to the active 32 one of the bench. It is a psychic type, so that could uh, be kind of a, a relevant Pokemon. Also, if you're still afraid of uh, the Deoxys. Uh, what am I saying? Of Deoxys, Baby Buzzle. Deoxys can also be kind of a tech card to just, uh, if the uh, Baby Buzzle have a, has a bunch of energies, they need a bunch of energies because only if the if we have a total amount of prize cards is four, then he can rely on Sledgehammer for a bunch of damage. Otherwise, he will only two shot the, the uh, Tapu Koko since they are losing strong energy in the rotation. So that's awesome, but think about Deoxys if you're afraid of fighting. Okay, another Pokemon that spreads a bunch of damage, it is Necrozma Jax. I am still not sure if we can, uh, are gonna put Necrozma Jax in here. You deal 100 damage to every GX in play on the opponent's side of the field, but we are a GX ourselves, and Shrine of Punishment will also punish ourselves. So that is kind of the, the mechanic here, although you can use that attack, of course, and then rely on Acer Rolla to just get your Necrozma back in the hand, so you will not be uh, uh, having that downside to yourself. But that is just something to keep in mind. Another fact that the opponent has a Necrozma, it also has an ability. So again, a rule of evil coming into place, that is awesome. So, as you see, a bunch of mechanics are possible. Let's just put away all these Pokemon with abilities, because we will not be uh, talking about uh, all of the competitive decks. We're gonna talk about Shrine of Punishment, and. Uh, what other cards we can just pair it with. Another amazing card I want to talk about is Stalling Cards. Stalling Cards, first up is Hoopa. Hoopa cannot get, be attacked by EX cards and GX cards. Very, very fantastic. We've seen it before with Acer Walla. We've seen it uh, do really well at a bunch of big tournaments throughout the season. So Hoopa will still be here. With the loss of Garbutoxin, we will maybe see a little muck to just block that. But if we don't see a little muck, no GX is able to touch this guy, which is awesome. So the thing we're gonna do here is uh, we're just gonna put Hoop up front, just uh, give it a bunch of energies, uh, try smacking damage with Super Cyborg while Shrine of Punishment is in play, and uh, we're just gonna poke around some damage until uh, yeah the Shrine of Punishment kicks in a ton of damage while we get the KOs with a Hoopa. They will need to uh, hit six regular KOs in order to get their prize cards because of course we are uh, a one prize attacker and uh, we're not running any GXs because of course Shrine of Punishment is in play. Next is uh, you can also go the water route if you're not uh, a big fan of Hoopa. You can also try a little Ninetales. It comes also 
also packed with the uh, Vulpix, Alolan Vulpix with the free attack beacon. You can just put two Pokemon from the deck into your hand and start swinging. You have some consistency, so maybe Alolan Ninetales is kind of a, a nice strategy here. If you're not a big fan of Weavile, uh, you can just uh, just uh, go for the stall method. This can also work with Aqua Patch, by the way, so you can have yourself a stall mechanic with Shrine of Punishment. Uh, and if you want some more spread, there's also a Kyogre with Dual Splash. Interesting, very similar attack like the attack of uh, Latios, but it has more HP. Next up is a great strategy I want to talk about here. It's not kind of stalling, but uh, in a way it is. It has Chaos Wheel. If you're familiar with Chaos Wheel, it's kind of the uh, ability that, of course, the uh, or actually the attack that Giratina EX had. Very, very fantastic. Chaos Wheel. Your opponent can play any Pokemon tool, special energy or stadium cards. What does this make uh, sense? Well, they cannot even play stadium cards in order to get rid of Shrine of Punishment. So that is very, very fantastic. Another great thing is that it cannot uh, attach special energy. So if you're running a bunch of enhanced hammers, no energy is coming on to the Zoro objects. We will be safe, even though we're weak to darkness. If they cannot have enough energies, we are good to go. And uh, also, they cannot attach tool cards, so no choice bands. Even though Floatstone get ro gets rotated, they cannot even attach a skateboard, etc. So a very fantastic card to try out with Shrine of Punishment. I'm a huge fan of Shrine of Punishment, so that's the reason we are having episode 184 all about Shrine of Punishment. So if you have more ideas about Shrine of Punishment, put them in the comment section below. I'm still getting started here. Next up is, if you're going for the spread mechanic with the Tapu Koko, let's say you're using flying flip, turn after turn after turn, well, uh, the combination of Trident Punishment, if you don't want to go for the Tapu Lele and the replays, uh, the, the damage counters, you could also go for crazy attack with Raven's Claw, dealing 10 damage, plus uh, 10 more for every damage counter that the opponent has uh, yeah, on all of their Pokemon. So let's say Trident Punishment kicks in, you use flying flip a couple of times, Hunchko will be able to get the KOs on almost everything. So uh, just to keep it in mind, another great thing I want to try out personally is of course, Look at this card, it's a spirit tomb. Uh, it has the Curse Whirlpool, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon cannot retreat. I know they are gonna run Guzma, but if they don't have any Guzmas to work with anymore, just think about it, they will be stuck in the active position. And the good thing about being, keeping someone stuck in the active position, of course, Shrine of Punishment. If Shrine of Punishment is in play, uh, just to think about, there's also a Regice that uh, prevents the opponent from just... Uh, let me just take a moment, minute here, just give me two seconds here, fellas. Well, I get out, of course, the Reggie Ice. I'm just thinking about it right now. Just for you guys, I have all my cards stacked around here. You should see the table right now. Okay, this is the Reggie Ice. If you have a Reggie Rock in play, prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to this by your opponent's stage two, which means this uh, Regice cannot be attacked by Gardevoirs, cannot be attacked by Shift Trees, can also be kind of a stalling Pokemon. So I definitely wanted to include it here. It's uh, in the water build version of, of course, the stalling mechanic. And there's, of course, another Regice that is not from, that's from the Celestial Storm set. And let's see if I can find it. Yes, of course I can find it here. And that is the Regice that I wanted to talk about in the first place. And that's going to be the ice, Icy Barrier. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon from your opponent, uh, yeah, your opponent cannot play any stadium cards from their hand. So if this is active, your opponent cannot get rid of the Shrine of Punishment. So that could also be in the water type of box with the Shrine of Punishment mechanic here. Okay, I was talking about Spirit Tomb and how you could just make sure, let's say the opponent has used up all of their Guzmas, because of course you're running Hoopa together with Spirit Tomb, it's a great mechanic here. Well, they used all of their Guzmas. What can you do? You can just make something stuck in the active position that uh, cannot do anything and just uh, leave it stuck in the active position. Because of course, if they are stuck in the active position, Shrine of Punishment will uh, kick in turn after turn after turn and it will be fantastic. So. Now we have to be afraid, you only have four copies of uh, the Shrine of Punishment. How do we get them back in the deck? That is the main question, right? They're gonna use Field Blur, they're gonna use Brooklyn Hill, they're gonna use uh, maybe other stadium cards to get rid of ours, and that's gonna be very sad. We can run Lusamine, yes, that's right. It has two copies, uh, you had one, and of course the, uh, what was it again? This one, I think it's from Forbidden Light, and uh, we also had another one from Crimson Invasion, I think. Could be wrong, ho, but uh, this is a very fantastic card. Lusamine, put two and any combination of supporter cards and stadium cards from the discard pile into your hand. So you can even get your Guzmas back with it, but you can also get your Shrine of Punishments back. So I do recommend playing one copy of Lusamine. You'll never know when it might come in hand. You can get them immediately from the discard and start swinging again with Shrine of Punishment. Okay. Next up is Acerola. If you're playing some kind of a stall mechanic with Hoopa or, of course, the Alolan Ninetales, 
Ace Roller will be a must. Uh, you could also play Max Potion, but that way you're losing a bunch of energies. Ace Roller is way better. Put it in the hand and uh, promote it once again. Also, it can be kind of a retreat mechanic. If Hoopa is stuck with zero energies, they smack damage, use Ace Roller, promote something like a Coco, and boof, off you go once again. So Ace Roller, definitely a very solid uh, contender in a kind of a spread deck with Shrine of Punishment. I do love make, making things stuck in the active. So Guzma is a very fantastic card, making something stuck in the active. Together with Counter Crusher, you're gonna fall behind in price cards, as I mentioned. So we can start using Counter Crusher as very, very fun with, of course, the Spirit Tomb, something that I cannot retreat, ban. They will have to rely on Guzma and then Shrine of Punishment kicks in. Turn after turn after turn, very fantastic, right? So we're just gonna put those cards over there because Counter Catcher and Guzma are kind of a must in a deck like this because we're gonna fall behind in price cards we're definitely gonna need some things then of course disruption disruption party is here we're gonna have enhanced hammer and crushing hammer these are kind of a, a nice thing to slow the opponent down while Shrine of Punishment does the trick for you. So those definitely I would include. You also have, of course, things like Plumeria, but as a supporter for the turn, I would rather use things like the Guzma or anything or Shuffle support to draw into Shrine of Punishment. That is not a deck at all. This is just a bunch of ideas. This is a, a deck idea video. Of course, you know that it's Wednesday. It's always the same like that. So. In that uh, regard, also regular Dark Energies are kind of nice with Hoopa and of course the Spirit Tomb and of course the Hunch Crow. So you have a bunch of ideas already to start off with. And if you're interested, if you're playing with Ms. Magius, you can start running of course the Unit Energy because Unit Energy works with Ms. Magius, works with Tapu Lele and works with Oracorio. So very, very great indeed. Uh, you could also run Rainbow Energies, but yeah, don't run too much Special Energies, <laughs> otherwise you'll be in a bunch of trouble. So I would recommend in a deck like this running a bunch of 10 Energies. I'm a huge fan uh, of something like Weevil for myself together with Orocorio to spread a bunch of damage like crazy uh, with Tapu Coco and stuff so that is going to be a very very nice build indeed. Anyhow this was Zadler's TCG once again with an episode hope you guys enjoyed the uh, deck idea videos of course on uh, Shrine of Punishment let me know if you came up with a great idea for this card as well I have a ton of deck ideas in mind as you can see I'm gonna build a deck later down uh, this week so you can have a deck profile video on something I built so far it's gonna probably be post rotation because you guys seem to be loving the post rotation content and anyhow let me know in the comment section of course i want to know your opinion about this card and uh, what deck or are we gonna see that worlds a bunch of uh, top decks are running a bunch of gx's so definitely gonna see a bunch of play anyhow this was zapdos tcg uh, if you enjoyed what you saw be sure to demolish the like button and subscribe for more content like this and i'll be seeing you guys shortly anyhow have a fantastic rest of the day i'm out peace out if you wanna go and test a deck that isn't played a lot Then it's for my dad, listen to what I'll say If you wanna go and try it out with me Let me know how it does in a tournament I think it could be really great Chilling on Sundays, one new idea